Hey guys, welcome to my class. My name is William Kessling and I'm a digital design artist living and working in California. Once in After Effects, we're gonna go over some tips and tricks to really elevate your motion design edit. I'm really excited for you guys to take this class because taking control of the programs that you're using allows you to be more efficient when you're working on a project, which then makes it more enjoyable in the long run. So this all being said, let's jump over to the desk and dive right into this class. What I wanna go into is how to source extra footage to add a little bit more visual effects. The sourcing footage is something that you can do on your own to help you further tell a story. It is okay to source footage. I think it's okay and I think a lot of times it's kind of looked at as if it's a bad thing. I source footage to add visual effects to my comps or to my projects to really push them even more. For this lesson, we're gonna source dust particles. When used correctly, although it seems like a very small thing, can be used to really elevate, especially the project that we're working on, to give it some atmosphere. What we're gonna do first is we're going to pull up YouTube, and when we have YouTube up, we can go ahead and search for what we want. Now, it's good to know that you don't have to use YouTube. Like, obviously, there's a bunch of stock footage websites out there, but let's say you don't have the funds or you don't have the money. Going to YouTube first is what I recommend um, and don't be afraid to just, you know, get good with your searches and figuring out how you're gonna phrase this for when you're kind of looking for what you want. Make sure that when you're sourcing something, using the words like free and making sure that in the description it's free to use, um, even if it is for something that you're doing internally, it's still good to always think about that and practice that. So I know that I want dust particles. So I'm going to type in free alpha dust particles. Alpha is almost like if there's going to be no background, but definitely go look for things on your own or you can kind of follow what I do and I'll put the link of the one that I use in the description that you guys could just download if you guys don't want to search. So I'm going to type in free alpha dust particles and click enter and then make this a little bit bigger and I'm just going to go to the first one. So let's click and see what he's asking for um, and see what it is. So it's got a little bit of music to it and it's literally just little dust particles kind of floating, which is exactly what we want. So click show more and uh, he's asking for a donation. He's got a Patreon. So you, if you have the money, you can give the person some money to be able to download this, but he's also offering it for free. So you can go download 4K and he gives you a link. And Gumround is a website that I've come to multiple different times to download plugins or to download free things like this. And so I know that it's a secure website and I feel safe going here. And I know that this is more reputable and I can trust it. It's always great to be able to figure out creative ways to add depth and atmosphere into your project. And I'm also gonna show you guys how to use that sourced dust particle footage to really add depth and atmosphere to your project as well. So being back in our After Effects project, we can see that we have something that is already pretty great. What I want to do first is I want to show you guys how you guys can incorporate those dust particles that we showed you earlier. The first thing I want to do is I want to bring the dust particles into my project. I know that I have them underneath footage and I want to drag all that footage and I want to call these animation and then I want to go into my finder and I want to go into my visual effects panel and I can just maybe drag this right in here. Sometimes it doesn't work, no problem. We're just going to drag the dust right into the footage folder and it's going to come up here and I want to put it in a visual effects VFX. Now I've got our visual effects dust right here. I can say fit to be able to view the entire thing and you can see that it's kind of rendering so it's a little bit slow but you guys can get an idea of what we're working with. Now that that's in there I want to apply that dust to this shot right here. What I want to do is I want to pre-comp this shot. Pre-comping a shot is basically taking a shot that you have in a composition and making another comp within that composition that just holds that specific shot. So I'm gonna select this shot and I'm gonna do Shift Command C to make a pre-composition of that shot. I wanna label this Podium Dust. I'll do Move All Attributes to New Composition even though I don't have any effects. What we need to do is adjust composition duration to the time span of the selected layer. So my selected layer is only this, long and so I want it, the composition that we create to also mimic that. So I'm going to click OK. And you can see now that the composition, the pre-comp composition that we just created is now the size of the shot that we had edited already. Now to get into this pre-comp, what you can do is just double click on the pre-comp. What I want to do next is now I just want to drag my visual effects dust on top of my panel here. And you can see 
that since it was alpha, there is no background to the actual image, which is great. Now we can kind of see that even now it adds a little bit of value, but it's not really pushing it to where we want it to go. We wanted to make it a little bit more subtle. And a lot of times when doing stuff like this, it's all about being subtle. Clicking R to make do rotate, maybe just seeing how it looks like this. And I think it looks a little bit better when it's rotated more at a 90 degree angle. And I hit S right about 19. And that's kind of cool right there. Maybe a little bit off to the side. I kind of want to mask it off so it's only in a certain location in this actual shot. Now I want to create a mask on this. So I'm going to do Shift Command N and I want the mask to kind of look a little bit organic. So what I'm doing is I'm just selecting these points. I'm going to click G on the keyboard to then be able to get my pen tool. And I'm going to hold Option. When I hold Option and drag over this, you'll see that it's different. This is me not holding Option and I get something that I can just move. Now if I hold Option and I drag it over, I'm getting the pen tool so I can make this a little bit more of an organic shape, which is what we want. And now I'm just gonna get an organic shape here that feels nice. Maybe kind of does a little wrap around here. And it doesn't need to be perfect and you'll see why. So now you kind of see it's kind of positioned right around here. And maybe we wanna make it a little bit bigger. And we want it to go up a little bit more and then rotate just a bit like this. I'm going to click M on that layer because I know that there's a mask on it. So if I click M, then the mask will pop up. And now on the mask, I want to twiddle this down and I want to go to mask feather. And then I want to feather it out. So you see, if we feather it a bunch, you know, the, the line isn't as harsh, which is nice. Now what we can do to make this a little bit less harsh is we can put a simple choker on this. In a simple choker, you'll see what it'll do is it'll add an outline to the outside or it'll kind of come down a little bit on it. And so I'm just adding a simple choker just a little bit just to kind of make it so they're not as intense of pieces. But then I want to add a little bit of a sharpen to kind of maybe bring out some of those small pieces. And you can see if I go all the way up, it'll bring up a lot of the pieces which is obviously not what we want, but maybe we want around 300. Then we can toggle that off and on. So you can see some of the things are kind of showing up a little bit more than the others. And now we can say, okay, this is looking, you know, nice. I can see what I, I'm trying to achieve, but now I want to kind of adjust the lighting a bit. I'm going to go up to layer. I'm going to go to new adjustment layer. Adjustment layers are your guys' friends. Adjustment layers are going to allow you to apply a bunch of effects to a bunch of different layers simultaneously instead of going through each individual layer. There's definitely your use cases for adjustment layers, so definitely play around with them and see what works best for you. I know with what I want to do with my adjustment layer is I want to add a little bit of color correction. There's a bunch of different ways to add color correction from adding tints to adding levels. I always like Lumatri Color. And you can go ahead and select your adjustment layer and you can drag and drop Lumetri color directly onto the adjustment layer. Or with the adjustment layer selected, you can double click Lumetri color and add it directly onto the adjustment layer. I like this way to color because it gives you a lot to work with in just one effect. Um, and it's something to get an idea across, something to do a quick edit, something to add a little bit extra color fast. So basic correction with this will give you things like your white balance, your tone, saturation. And then when you get into creative, You'll get things like your original adjustments, which will be like faded film, sharpen, uh, vibrance, more saturation. But what I want to do is I want to go into saturation and I want to boost up the saturation a bit, go into tone and I want to jump the contrast a bit and I want to maybe bump the whites a bit and I want to take down the shadows. Contrast will add a little bit of saturation as well. So contrast I'm going to do is 50 and really I'm just playing around. All right, so you guys can kind of see what I've done here for my color correction. A really simple color correction, but you can see the before and after and how we really brought this thing to life. So after we kind of did this initial color, the thing that I've noticed is that the dust particles are a little bit too bright and unnatural. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my dust particles. I'm gonna click T to pull up my opacity. I'm gonna take down the dust particles to around 40%. 
And what I can do to even soften up those particles even more and make them feel a little bit more natural is I can add a blur to it. And you can see if I turn up the blur a lot, everything will kind of go away. And I just want to keep this super minimum and do a 10% blur. And you can see that now we've got something that's feeling a little bit more natural. I want to add a little bit of glow to this actual piece. So the glow will give it a little bit more brightness and I'll also kind of bring it to life. So I'm going to go back to my adjustment layer and I'm going to add glow. So glow, when it comes stock, um, it's a pretty powerful tool and it's definitely worth playing around with. So your threshold, you can kind of see when adjusting it. And then your radius, which we want our radius to be up because we don't want the glow to be centered on those saturate on those bright points. We want the glow to kind of be more dispersed and feel a little bit more natural. And so once that is, we can turn down the threshold to see what that does. Going up that, that radius makes it a little bit better. When you layer effects within your adjustment layer, it's good to note that the effect that's lowest will affect all of the effects that are above it. So right now, my glow effect is actually affecting the color that I put on it. But if I don't want it to affect the color, you'll see that it changes and that's not as the glow is not as saturated. So if I go back up and now I adjust the glow, you can see that the glow is more white and less of that blue. That's feeling pretty good to me. Um, it's also one thing to where you can go to adjustment layer and you can call this one color. And then what you can do is you can duplicate that layer by command D and you can call this one glow. So instead of having both your color and your glow on the same adjustment layer, you can go and have them split up. So on the glow adjustment layer, I'm actually going to delete the color. And on the color, I'm actually going to delete the glow. And now you can kind of play around with which one affects which just by switching over glow and color and how it goes. And how I'm kind of going up and down with these clips is command left bracket, right bracket, left bracket, right bracket to go up and down. So don't be afraid to kind of fine tune these things to make it right. Now, one thing I'm thinking after getting this all organized is that maybe the dust particles are moving a little bit too quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do command option T to bring up my time remapping. Time remapping allows you to remap the time of a certain clip to make it go slower or make it go faster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do time remapping and I'm going to make a keyframe and then I'm going to go to about the end and I'm going to make another one. And then I'm going to drag that point out just to make it a little bit longer of a clip because I want this to go a little bit slower. That feels pretty good. I'm just going to go into the opacity again and I'm going to change it to 40. I can even go back into that mask, feather this out to about 100. Now when looking at this, we can see what the before and the after was. So after and then before is this. I'm just giving you the utensils to be able to push these even further. So play around with all these settings, but really it's nice to be able to see how you can take that sourced free footage, put it into your project right away and make it add a little bit of depth and atmosphere to what you're working in. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, Feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.